pardon for sin and a peace that endures thine only presence to tear and to die. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings on mine would tend Almighty God and Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, our Creator, we worship you, our Redeemer, we worship you, our Grand Master Builder, who holds each of our lives in your infallible hands. We trust you. We trust your word. Where you say you know the plans you have for us. To prosper us and to give us an expected hope. Christ Jesus, the hope of our glory. The hope of glory. The hope that you, your servant, Dr. Fred, clinched to. Where to find himself right now in your eternal embrace where there is no sickness no tears and no more heartache that hope which is Christ Jesus we lift our we lift up today our we lift up our hands and share with others with others that we may all know Christ and live for him till we too enter into the glory. Heal every heart, I pray. Bind every wound, I plead. And give Mom Nelly, Robert, and his family, the DCC Church, the CFI Network, and all people everlasting peace in Jesus Christ's name we pray 
Amen. Premier of KZN, the Honorable Mr. Willis Mkono, on behalf of Etewini Mayor, Councillor Zandile Kumete, Mr. Matala, Head of Parks, Recreation and Culture, Mr. Temkos Novo, Head of Public Relations, Mr. Langa, Member of Provincial Legislature, V. Emmanuel, MPL, Serial Taba. A special thank. Thank you so much. We appreciate your prayers and your words today. Thank you so much. I'm Pastor Wendy McDonald, and this is Salatiel Kwanyana. And how long did you know my dad? Nearly 28 to 30 years. You had a good relationship. Oh, yes. Amen. Powerful men of God. We are what we are. Because of the man of God. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Shalashi. I want to say a very special thank you to Brigadier Anthony Gopal, the Mayville Police Station, Lieutenant Kulup, the Metro Police, and the Parks and Gardens, especially for this amazing job that you've done in helping provide all of the plants, both for here and at the memorial site. Please. Join us as we begin to worship the Lord with Pastor Johnny Krobler. Thank you so much for being here today. As we worship God together, in memory of my dad, a great hero, who loved Jesus with all his heart. Let's worship and do exactly what he would want us to do today. Thank you, Pastor Johnny. Oh, Lord, my God. When I'm in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the star, I hear the rolling thunder thy power throughout the universe display and sing my song
sand, the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Love you are 
Hear the sound of heaven It's the sound of many waters It's the sound of worship Coming from the throne There are cries of adoration As men from every nation Left their voice to make his glory known Singing holy, 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 you
Hallelujah. And to him be blessing and glory and honor and praise and power forever and ever and ever. Lift your hands, clap your hands. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Above all, his name is glorious. We exalt your name, our God, and bless you for your presence in this place. Amen. God bless you. Love each and every one of you. You may be seated today. I want my wife to come and join me at the pulpit. We are privileged to have been asked to pay tribute to our pastor, Fred. And uh, today, Patricia and I join this church family and those from around the world to bid farewell to our beloved pastor and apostle, Fred Roberts. You have run your race. You have stayed the course. You have graduated with honor. You have set the bar so high, Pastor Fred, and we confidently follow you as you follow Jesus. I've known Pastor Fred for as long as I've known Jesus. From today, he won't be here to guide me anymore with his wealth of knowledge and wisdom. Life's going to be very different for us from now on, but however, we thank God for the deep foundation of truth and revelation that Pastor Fred has laid in our hearts. Today on behalf of the and to the children, the Wellen and Wendy and Linda and Joy and the family. We know that God will comfort you and pour out his healing balm in your hearts. Today, especially Sister Nelly, we want to thank you for being an awesome pastor's wife. And for being the best partner to our pastor Fred. You stood by his side. You honored the man of God. You loved him, respected him, corrected him, and encouraged him. And we all witnessed your beautiful marriage relationship and we were enriched. And we thank God for you. Pastor Fred inspired us with his deep commitment to the Lord Jesus and with his passion for winning the lost and showed us the importance of establishing new believers in the faith. I'll never forget that day we went out evangelizing and we won quite a few souls to the Lord and I came, home, came back to the church and I had a, a pack of salvation cards and I said, Pastor Fred, look how many souls I've won to the Lord. And he looked at me and said, that's wonderful, Johnny. Where are they? <laughs> he popped my bubble on the spot. He said, Johnny, until they followed up, it's not worth it. And he taught us the value of a soul. That souls are not a number. He taught us the value of making disciples and following through, through with people. And uh, something about Pastor Freddie was always talking about the church. It was wonderful flying under the wings of this great eagle and walking in this faith. I remember when we built this building we were standing in, it had taken a lot to get to where we were and we were at the final stages of finishing. We were at the stage of putting in chairs and carpets and Pastor John, I don't know if you remember, Pastor Fred left us here and off he went. And he said, no, guys, finish this thing. And we were here and, man, I tell you, the stress. And we were trying our best to make it. Eventually we said, okay, what we'll do, we'll do only carpets halfway. And we won't carpet the aisles. And, you know, we'll put the padded chairs up to there and then plastic chairs so that we can finish. <laughs> and we spoke to, I think you spoke to Pastor Fred, John. And he said, Pastor Fred, this is so much stress. We believe in God for them. Pastor Fred said, no, oh, you worry about the money. You leave that in my faith department. You go ahead and finish the church. And uh, 
you know, so thank God that we got an apostle like this. It can be example to us in all things. He was a man of tremendous vision. I remember standing here on the day that we opened this building and it was such a milestone, such incredible push to get here. And we stood here and on that morning we were dedicating the building to the glory of God and we were all rejoicing and having achieved this. And as we standing there, Pastor Fred said, Oh, this is wonderful. Now we believe in God for a campsite. Oh, I said, oh, Jesus, can't we just celebrate today? Now we're already on the next project. But if anybody knows Pastor Fred, he was born, as they say, with a hammer in his hand. And uh, his daughter Joy there has taken the hammer over. It's become the hammer of Thor in her hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, we thank God for them. It's been never a dull moment. It's been beautiful serving God with Pastor Fred. And you were saying, Pat. I just want to add to that, that when I came here, I was 20 years old. And I had a, I was, I had a spirit of rejection, but I felt love here. Mm. And when he, when he preached the word, it came right into my soul. It changed me. I'm a better wife today because of his words speaking over Amen. my life. Amen. I'm a better... I'm a better um, Mother. Mother. Because of his words speaking over my life. Because he spoke the word. Amen. And that changed me. And I want to say thank you. Thank you, Pastor Fred, for speaking the truth all the time to us. Amen. Amen. I remember, you know, being with Pastor Fred's always a Holy Ghost meeting. and never knew when the meeting is going to take a turn, what's going to happen next. But uh, there was never a dull moment. We had our laughs. I just think I'll tell you one story. We're standing, I think we were in the Berea Road, and the prayer line was going. You know, Pastor Fred, when he's praying, he's closing his eyes and he's praying. He's walking down the prayer line and he lays his hands on people. And this one lady laid his hands on her head and her wig stuck to his ring. And yeah, he's going down the. And he's. He's none the wiser. He's just blessing everybody as he goes on. They tell me all those from that point on never lost their hair. It was a miracle. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was a wonderful day. And lastly, Pastor Fred taught us to preach, pray, and die in five minutes. I say, if you're in this church, you have to be a spiritual parabat. I remember standing here leading the worship, and he walks up behind me, he whispers, Johnny, you're preaching tonight. You learn to be ready all the time. And uh, we thank God for everything that we've learned in Him. So today, we want to say that we are honored to have served and privileged to be a part of this vision. It's been an exciting adventure. And uh, we walked into DCC young and in inexperienced. But in Christ, we found our place in this family. And I've had the privilege of calling Pastor Fred my dad. So we love him and honor him. And thank God for him. God bless you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Pastor Johnny. Thank you, Pat. Thank you to everyone who's joining us around the world via live stream. I want to spend a special greeting to our church in Cape Town, joining us via live stream in the Ottery Auditorium. Thank you. But most of all, thank you to each one of you here at Durban Christian Center for loving him for loving dad and mom the way that you do, for building and rebuilding this amazing facility, that this is going to be back better. Amen. Every brick by brick, every threat that the devil has made, we're going to answer with the word of God and we're going to answer with a brick. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, it's such a privilege. Today we had a big surprise. Last night, Jane Clement, Kim Clement's wife flew in from California and surprised mom. And so I'm going to ask you, Jane, to come and share a few words of tribute to dad. Thank you, Jane. Can you hear me now? Great. I'm so honored to be here today to give honor to a great general in God's kingdom. Pastor Fred was my uncle, and he led me to the Lord when I was 
just a young girl, and he baptized me in 1973. And I married Kim Clement, who was the pianist for Durban Christian Center at the time. And um, we were here for many years. And then we moved to America, and um, I'm sure a lot of you probably heard about him. He passed away last year, November the 23rd, and um, Pastor Fred has passed away also exactly one year later. To me, that's, that's very, very, um, it's, it's something to think about. You know, life and death, is so, it's so prevalent when we come to a funeral, it's, just, it's eye-opening because every single one of us will meet our maker. Every single one of us will, will have a chance. And what we do here on planet Earth is we, this is our boot camp. And our boot camp, we have to Everyone has a different struggle and a different, a different set of circumstances that they have to overcome. But the overcomer gets the reward, and we must be overcomers. And even although this is a sad occasion, uncle, my Uncle Fred, he would have been winning souls at his funeral if he could. So I'm going to try to help him do that. Because <laughs> we love to, to talk about eschatology him and I, and um, it's what it's all about. We live and we die, and what happens on earth and what the choices we make, they matter very, very much. And so I just want to encourage you all, because it's, it's a funeral, that we all, all take notice of how, how um, important our life is and what we do, what we do with it. And so, my uncle was a great general, and he taught us a lot. He won souls wherever he went. He prayed for the sick. He, he was a typical example of what we're supposed to be. And a, he was an apostle, one of God's generals. And I know that right now, he's up in heaven there. We told him he needed to follow the uh, sound of the keyboard because we're sure he's going to be looking for Kim. I told him he had to send a message. I sent a message to him that I love him forever and ever. And um, we said, I said, Uncle Fred, you must just look for the sound of the piano keys and you'll find him. So I know right now he is probably having the time of his life. Um, we down here, we're, we're sad because he's gone, but we'll get over it. And every single one of you will have a chance to, to um, make a choice. Everything, everything that you say, everyone that you forgive, everything that you do, God accounts for it. Every single attitude you have, it all counts for something. So when you overcome and you forgive and you, and you love one another, um, that is taken account of. And so I just want to leave you with that thought of this being boot camp, and it's not forever. It's not forever. Each one of us will, will encounter the Lord, and we will be given our rewards at the beamer seat. And so I was preaching this to Kim, and he called me his little beamer uh, because <laughs> that's where we get our rewards. There's two judgments, the great white judgment throne and the beamer seat. And we don't want to be at that great white judgment throne. We only want to go to the beamer seat where we get our rewards. And those rewards are, it's not judgment, it's you are getting your prize, you're getting your reward because Jesus did everything, he paid the price, and there's nothing we could have done to earn it, not a single thing. So it's a free gift, and I hope all of you out there will accept the free gift that God has given us, the Lord Jesus Christ, who paid the price for us. And with that, I'll say thank you for, for letting me say a few words. Thank you, Jane. You know, talking about the Beamer seats, 
Jane, yeah. talking about the Beamer seat, you know, that's where you get your rewards and your crowns. And Jane and I would always talk to my dad about eschatology and getting the crowns. There's a soul winner's crown. There's a crown for those who look yes. for his appearing. Yes. There's a, a, a crown of righteousness. There's a crown for those who've been faithful and served in the church. Hallelujah. Yes. So there are five crowns. And so we walked into dad on Friday, or Saturday rather, and uh, he told me, he said, Wind, I'm going to get six crowns. I said, six crowns, Dad? How are you going to get six crowns? That's not biblical. You're only supposed to get five. He said, the sixth one is for living with your mother for 165 years. <laughs> so my mother said, no, 63 years, Fred. He said, 165 years. <laughs> well, he's up there in heaven and he's... He can't believe it. He can't believe what he's seeing. So it's just a, something that we've got to look forward to as Christians is, is going beyond this life. This life is but a smidgen of time. Come on. Just a smidgen of time. Before you know it, your life is over. And you'll say, what, is, what happened to you there? He'll say, that was life, mate. <laughs> that's it. It's all you got. So that's what you've got to do is you've got to take each day and live the best that you can because immortality is it's, eternity it is it is thank you so much jane pastor brad norman won't you come and pay your tribute pastor brad norman from the church in england appreciate you so much coming all this way to be here a part of the service today. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Hi. Folks, I greet you today and bring you greetings and condolences from all of the CFI churches in London and around Europe. I, I want to say today, I have been privileged to only have two spiritual parents my whole life, and that is Pastor Fred and Sister Nell, and you have been the most phenomenal spiritual parents to me. At the age of seven, when Pastor Fred was holding revival and healing meetings in the city of London, in the city of Durban, in the city hall, um, my mum had an incredible encounter with God. Our family got radically saved, and mum was healed of cancer. And uh, from that time, wherever I've been in the world, wherever we've lived in the world, there was only one man that I would ever call my pastor, and that was Pastor Fred. And we are celebrating a real general today, folks. You know, we have many people out there running around and calling themselves apostles. But apostleship is not just having a great big platform and working miracles. Apostles are those who are establish the kingdom of God, not just in their own region, but in the nations of the world. And today there are believers and there are churches that are making an impact on their nations in almost every continent on the earth today because of the apostolic mantle on Pastor Fred. And I want you to take just a moment now to put your hands together and to recognize that and to honor it. He wasn't just a great apostle and a powerful man of God, but he was the most incredible spiritual father. And I remember many occasions when we were going through difficult times, Pastor Nell, having planted out in, in London. Before we even got on the phone, Pastor Fred would phone us. And we always knew it was him because the phone would ring at 4 o'clock in the morning. Because he'd be up so early praying and he, he never managed to get his thinking around the fact that we were two hours behind time in London. But on one particular occasion, and this is the only one I'm going to quickly take a moment to share, we had just planted out a new church and were in a real moment of crisis, and he phoned at four o'clock in the morning. And I said, Pastor Fred, I need to come and see you. I'm going to check what flights are available and phone Muriel tomorrow and make an appointment. And I remember the next morning at nine o'clock, I phoned Muriel, and Muriel said, Brad, he's already there. He got on a plane last night, and three hours later, our spiritual father was sitting in our living room, holding our hands, listening to us, and just speaking incredible wisdom into our lives. And I really want to honor him, pay tribute to him today. And the last thing I want to say is this to the family, and especially to you, Sister Nell. Thank you so much for sharing him with us. We know the sacrifices that you had to make as he 
took that call of God upon his lives and impacted the nations. And we are so grateful to you all today for doing this and allowing us to share his life with you. And our loss is so great today. We can only imagine how great yours is. We love you and we honor you today. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Brad. We'll go to a clip from Pastor Benny Hinn, who uh, sent a greeting from overseas. He's a great friend of our family and also the church for many years. In fact, the first Jesus conference my dad did, Pastor Benny was there and has been a great friend of the ministry and our family because he loves the move of the Holy Spirit. Many times dad would counsel him and pray with him and so thank you, Pastor Benny. Pastor Fred Roberts. Pastor Fred Roberts. A mighty man of a God. A mighty man of God who is in glory today. Touched my life deeply. And I want to talk to all of you, family and friends that are gathered together, to rejoice today because he's with the Lord. A mighty servant of God is in glory. I will tell you this. And the Bible says it, and I know you know it, but it's good to be reminded that ye sorrow not as others which have no hope. Pastor Fred did not die. There's no such thing in the Bible. Only the shell went back to the earth. Pastor Fred is in glory. To be absent from the body. That's all that happened, really. The body that he lived in, the shell that he lived in, the earth suit, as I like to call it, that he lived in, is the only part, really, that had to go back to the ground. But the real person is in heaven. And he's touched my life, he's touched your life. We're going to all miss him. I want to soon come and be with you all in South Africa, because I love you all. Thank you for being my family. And thank God for the blessings that Pastor Fred has been to my life. I would not be who I am without Pastor Fred. I'll never forget him giving me that prophecy in his car in Durban many years ago in the 80s that God would use me. Thank God for Pastor Fred. And thank God for all of you. Love you much. Bye-bye. I want to send my love and greetings to everyone gathered today to celebrate the homegoing of one of the great generals of South Africa, Dr. Fred Roberts. We want you to know, Donick and I and everyone here at the River and Revival Ministries International, how much we love you, and especially Sister Nelly, you amazing lady, and of course, Neville and Wendy, John and Joy and Llewellyn, and then all the grandkids, and then the great grandkids. We Listen. I know when someone leaves and goes, we miss them. But we know this one thing, that the day shall come when we'll all be reunited again at that meeting in the air. And I can't even begin to think about what took place when he entered into glory as they announced the arrival of Fred Roberts and all those that had gone on before him came from, uh, you know, wherever they were and they gathered like in a stadium formation and as he entered into glory, they cheered him in. Everyone that had been saved under his ministry, healed, set free, delivered, and had gone on before him. And I can't imagine the celebration as he entered into glory. But then, of course, he got to see the one who he loved so much, Jesus. And, you know, I want to encourage you here today. Many of you, your lives have been touched and transformed through the faithful ministry of Dr. Fred Roberts and his wife, Nellie. Listen. I know that the kids and the grandkids have been given the mandate to carry on that vision that he had burning on the inside of his heart. And of course, we all. Hallelujah. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know if you'll be able to sit down or do this song. Hallelujah. Sibong in Vanam, the true devil. Who 
This is my dad's favorite song. <laughs> Pastor Eric Froelich. Our time is running short, so we need to be a little brief. <laughs> Thank you. Pastor Eric Froelich, all Thank the way you. from Holland. Thank Hello. you, Pastor Thank Eric. You. Thank you. Wow. I don't know how I can follow that act. <laughs> but what a great privilege to be able to be here today. Pastor Fred, you are truly a spiritual father. And Nelly, we love you. And, um, you know, when I came to Durban Christian Center back at the Lyric, I was taught, I saw by example, the power of God. I lived, we lived in the notion that everything is possible with Jesus. And it was such a great example. And when we left for the Netherlands in 85, we took a vision of a miracle-working big God because of what Pastor Fred instilled in us. And it was such a privilege because we, that spirit remained with us and we were, about, were able to transfer that in the, in the country of the Netherlands. People started thinking big. They thought I was crazy when I came. They called me the rumpus dumper from South Africa because I talked big, you know. But God is a big God. And Pastor Fred was always there. Pastor Nelly and Pastor Fred came so often when we, uh, to visit us when we were in the beginning days and through the years, annually, at least once a year, they came, encouraged us, uh, partook in conference that we organized, uh, organized in those days, and always available on the phone. I could phone him anytime, and he would encourage me and just tell me, preach Jesus, preach Jesus. You know, I'd try and tell him, in, in a, preach Jesus. And it was such an encouragement to us. And as a uh, finishing off, I just want to say that tomorrow in our service, my wife Nelly is going to run the service, and we've dedicated it to Pastor Fred. And we're going to have memories and clips and things the whole service. We love you, Fred. Thank we you, Pastor you. Eric. Thank you so much. Pastor Jimmy Crompton, what a great privilege it is to be together today in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Well, it's a great privilege for me and my wife to be here. I want to tell you a few things. Number one, if you've got real friends, hold on to them. There are not many real friends in the world. When uh, we went through a trial and our denomination had put us on in the Sunday Times and everywhere across the nation, we stunk like skunks. There was one guy who came down to Port Elizabeth and supported us in our greatest hour of need. And then instead of taking an offering or an honorarium, he gave us money. I don't know if you people know how generous this couple have been, not just to me and Mariana and Word of Faith, but to people across the world. I want to thank God for that. But I, may I quote a few scriptures? I know I'm supposed to be... Two minutes, but I noticed Brad got four. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to take my chance, okay? In the book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 36, it said, David, when he had fulfilled the purpose of God, he fell asleep. I believe that Fred Roberts went home to the reward when it fulfilled his purpose. It wasn't an accident what date it was. It was God's time. All right, listen to this. This might sound negative, but there's a positive to it. In the book of Lamentations 1.9, it said God would punish Israel because of their immorality and because they had denied his destiny for them. And I want to say today, there's so many guys that have fallen, so many great men. I glorify God for a man that stood 
in the ministry for 65 years and he kept the purposes of God until Jesus came. And you know what his purpose was? His purpose was win the lost at any cost. Look across this congregation. You're looking at the purpose of Dr. Fred Roberts. Everyone that got saved on his ministry, he fulfilled his purpose. And I want to tell you something. God was angry with Israel for their immorality, but because they didn't fulfill their purpose. And I want to thank God for Fred and Nellie Roberts, our close friends that loved us through all these difficult times and remained our friends. And I want to ask you a question. As you sit in this funeral today, have you fulfilled the purpose of God for your life? Some people come into our lives and quickly go. Some stay for a while. Others leave footprints on our hearts that we are never ever the same again. In every era, dispensation, generation, epoch, God always raises a man who is unique, prolific, and outstanding to the time in history. The history of the world is the history of his great men. Like the Duel Moody's, George Whitfield's, Charles Finney's and the many greats of the preceding centuries and generations, Dr. Fred Roberts, my dad, stands tall and robust, an icon in his time, unrivaled, unequaled, and unparalleled. He is the doyen of the charismatic move in Durban, South Africa. His impact, influence, and inspiration to thousands and millions of people across the globe is the testimony of a disciplined, determined, and a very brave heart. Dead and an undying love for his maker and master, the Lord Jesus Christ. It was my honor to study at Durban Christian Center, the school of the spirit in the early 1980s. I enrolled at the University of Durban Westville when the spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said to me, I didn't call you to be here. I immediately responded to the voice of God and enrolled at Durban Christian Center. I immediately responded to that call and my association with Durban Christian Center and with Dr. Roberts and Pastor Nelly goes back three decades. I'm a protege of Dr. Fred Roberts. For the last 20 years, I dared to call him father. He was my dad. He was a father. He was my best friend. He's my confidant. He was my mentor. He was a pioneer. He was a legacy builder. The epitome of gentleness and hum humility was part of his life. Even though he possessed many quintessential qualities and hallmarks that we can all speak about here this afternoon, he will never die. His spirit lives on forever. He will always be a living legend, a legacy builder. The memory of the righteous is blessed. Dr. Roberts had the most prolific way of transcending from his position as a founder and senior pastor to become a mentor and tutor to those around him. When he spoke, I just listened. There was a great force hidden in his gentle command you couldn't help but marvel. I ponder over the many beautiful things he would share about the coming move of the Holy Spirit and a great awakening that is about to hit planet Earth. In my frequent visits to the home to visit Pastor Fred and Nelly, especially the past few months, he would say to me all the time, you young ones are going to be in the center of that revival. He wanted so much to live. Said to me so many times, please pray for me that I will reach 90. But the will of God triumphs over the will of man. I just want to reminisce on three memorable occasions, even though there are many, many that has taken place in my life. When my daughter Edessa was two and a half years old and she was ill at the hospital, I phoned Dr. Roberts and I said to him, would you please stand with me and pray? Within 35 minutes, Pastor Fred and Pastor Nelly arrived at the hospital and they began to pray, encouraged us and prayed the word of faith and spoke to us about ministry. Number two, 
I was building this church edifice. He came on two occasions, Dr. Roberts came on site and spent five hours and four hours respectively and spoke to me about church buildings. He was intrigued about buildings, soul winning and discipleship was his forte. My tour with him in Israel was the best. The, those 12 days were the most memorable time as we journeyed through the Holy Land. He baptized Nathan and I and said to me, now you got to help me to baptize the 60 of the other tourists. You cannot, I said to him, well, I'm not coming to Israel because of history. I'm coming to Israel because of destiny. This is what he said. You cannot deny the past in pursuance of your future. The word male in the Hebrew is the word zaka, which means to design, to designate, to mark as never to be forgotten. Dr. Roberts was designed for greatness. He left his mark and footprint and seal upon the hearts of millions of people across the globe. His spirit will live on and never be forgotten. If you would not be forgotten as soon as you are dead, either write something worth reading or do something worth writing. Pastor Fred did both. To Pastor Nelly and the family, I just want to say, Pastor Nelly, thank you for sharing Pastor Fred with us. But I just want all of you to know today, he will forever live in our hearts and he will never die. God bless you and thank you. Today, Martin, we're doing just like Dad said to you. Pastor Martin, where's my orchestra? <laughs> thank you. Put your hands together for the Durban Philharmonic. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's watching and waiting, waiting. For you and for me Jesus is calling. 
which Jesus died is the shelter on which we can hide and it's grace is so free it's sufficient for me and deep is its fountain as wide as the sea there's room at the cross for you there's room at the cross for you oh millions have come there's still room for one there is room at the cross for you there's room at the cross for you there's room at the cross for you all millions have come there's hell
friends in the ministry. I know that at his birthday, you were one of the people that he treasured. And in fact, at his birthday, instead of receiving a gift, he gave you a gift. He gave you a good gift, Pastor Nicholas. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. 40 years ago, I was studying at Deborah Christian Center School at Lyric. There was a, a great class which was called Christ the Healer. Dr. Fred Robert used to take that class. One day while he was lecturing, he saw me sitting down there among the students. And then he pointed at me, he said, you, I want to see you at the break. Break was about 10 o'clock in the morning, then I went in the kitchen where the tea was made. He said to me, what are you doing here? I said, I'm studying. He said, and then, are you still going to carry your guitar running around like the merry-go-round playing that guitar? I said, yes. He said, you're wasting your time. And other question, 
What are you building out of that guitar? What are you building? Well, I couldn't answer him. And then he said, it's about time for you to start a church. We are getting old, you are not young anymore. What I liked, he said, him as an apostle, I can lay hand upon you. You'll be able to start the church. Do you believe that? I said, I believe. I knelt down in the kitchen there where the tea was made at Lyric. He took off his coat. He put his coat on me. I remember Llewellyn, uh, Pastor Llewellyn was watching. That time he used to work in the video department. I remember him saying, Dad, that's your anointing. Like, like as if he was a little bit jealous <laughs> seeing his father taking off his coat. And then I put that coat on, he laid, he laid his hand upon me. He finished praying, he said, tomorrow I will bring the trousers. <laughs> so it's your suit. Well, the following day he brought the, tra the, the suit, it was a brown suit. Whenever I had that suit on, I used to feel the anointing. There were some people who used to say to me, how come now when you stand on the pulpit, you stand like Pastor Fred, how come? <laughs> I used to think that maybe because I'm wearing his suit. Well, the anointing of that suit worked for me. It worked for me. Well, work was started and the work was going strong and strong. Right now, as I stand here, we're having nine strong churches. <laughs> From the apostle laying hands upon me. All these 40 years, he became my father, spiritual father. I honored him. He was give, giving me good advices till his last birthday. I think it was a couple of months ago. They invited me into their home. Same songs which were sang here by Pastor Johnny Robler. There were about nine of us in the house. It was his last birthday. They sang these old songs, you know. We sang those songs, and after that, he gave me a nice present. You call it a scooter or bicycle or what? I don't know what you call that. He said, my friend, so as the years went, went by, he used to call me friend. Friend, and I used to call him father. I submitted unto him till the last day. I used to tithe to him. Sunday, something said to me, tithe. Quickly I called my son, he transfers my tithe into the account there. And uh, as my father, I've learned to honor him and to love him. And he also loves me. He's the man who, he took me to America. The song was sung here by Chili Joe in Gonyamaga Chuta. We went to 24 churches in America singing that song. So I want to say to Umamu Neli and the whole family, thank you for allowing us uh, to have father like him 
and I promise and I vow that you are going to be our mother. You are going to be my mother. Thank you very much, Mom Nelly, and the whole family. God bless you all. Today, I'm what I am because of Dr. Fred Robert and Mom Nelly. The last word. People know me all over. <laughs> because of Dr. Fred Robert. I always remind even my congregation that if there was no Dr. Fred and Nelly Robert, you wouldn't know me. Out of that suit. <laughs> and I didn't buy suit for 17 years. I never bought a suit. He used to provide me with suits, shirts, shoes. Until the time came, he said, no more. <laughs> and he used the word, said to me, you are a lani now. <laughs> of course I was a lani. God bless you all. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Nicholas. Llewellyn Jr., my nephew, and Pastor Fred's grandson. I want to thank everyone for coming today. This means so much to me. Seeing everybody that my grandfather loved because you loved Jesus and you loved him and respected him, and honored him, and I thank you for that, every single one of you. But he was more than just a pastor, he was more than just a general to me, he was my grandfather. He was my friend, he was there for me when I needed him the most. And not hearing his voice is going to be hard, but we were blessed because he gave us such great words when he would preach the gospel. And he would tell us what Jesus meant to him and to me and to my family. And those words will stick with me and guide me to my future where I will see him again. And I'm blessed that I can say, stand here and honor a man that I think is the closest to Jesus I'll ever get before I see him. Because as he was standing here on the stage, he was at home. Every day, the same. He never changed. He spoke the word at home continuously. At dinner, we spoke about church. We actually have to ask him to quieten down a little bit sometimes. <laughs> and then I got onto it. <laughs> then him and I would speak, and then my grand would say, please, quieten down a little bit. We're having time to, no more church. Church is for church, home is for home. <laughs> but it was always constant. And I have, I have no more regrets. I have no, actually no regrets. I, I've said everything I had to say to him. I looked after him as much as I could. I gave him what I could. Because he gave me so much that I could never repay. He gave me Jesus. When I walked away, it was his words that brought me back. But I'm glad he's with Jesus, worshiping with the angels and having a grand old time. <laughs> Thank you so much for everybody. God bless you. Oh, Jesus Christ, in Kosi Abakosi. Oh, I'm here to Jesus Christ. To Jesus Christ. In God's name, I'm calling. I'm here to Jesus Christ. To Jesus Christ. In God's name, I'm calling. Oh!
think miracles don't exist look at me if it wasn't for her I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for my dad praying every morning at four o'clock I wouldn't be here today neither would you and I want to tell you this morning from our family we want to thank you each and every one of you for coming out today in this heat for loving my mom and dad for being there for them you are the church not this building this building what drove him was his love for you every morning he prayed for you he loved you the church one day I was sitting next to him watching TV and there were thousands of people and tears rolled down his cheeks and he said Lou what a look there's thousands going to hell what can we do what more can we do you see, you know what drove him was his love, his father's love for you. Because a father always wants to see his children safe. 
And he wanted to see you eternally safe. And that's why he spent so much time. He longed to be here one last time. Just one more time. To see you. And I want to tell you from our hearts, we are so grateful to you. Thank you for loving us. And thank you for loving my dad. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor John and Joy and Nathan and Becca, put your hands together for them. Didn't this church do an amazing job? Thank you, John, Joy, Becca, Nathan. I like the way they hand me the microphone. We're so grateful to each and every one of you that are here this afternoon. And I know that it's been quite a long time and you've been out in the sun. And I just want to maybe just recount some of the highlights and some of the funny moments. Because for those of you that don't know, uh, there were some funny moments when it came to Pastor Fred. But I want to begin this afternoon by saying that it was Albert Einstein who once said there are only two ways to live a life. One is as though nothing is a miracle, and the other is as though everything is a miracle. And I think that you would agree with me that Pastor Fred certainly lived his life by the latter. Pastor Fred, you lived as though everything was a miracle. You dreamed miracles, you spoke miracles, you prayed for miracles, and you lived and walked a miracle life. Some of the funny moments I want to tell you, I just started in the ministry here in 96, came to help Pastor Fred, and he said, we're going to go down to the south coast for a bit of a break. And I needed a break. I said, oh, that's wonderful. And we got down there and he told me, you can play tennis, you can swim, you can horse ride, you can do this, you can do that. And I had my whole day lined up. I knew what I was going to do. The next morning we woke up and lo and behold, it was raining cats and dogs. I was thinking, okay, well, I can't play tennis. What else can I do? And he said, I'll tell you what we're going to do. And with that, he whipped out the church constitution. He said, we're going to talk about the church and we're going to talk constitution. I thought, you know, surely he's kidding. No, he was not kidding. That's how passionate and committed he was to building God's kingdom. I don't know if you knew about Pastor Fred, but he was totally into gadgets. I think he was Mr. Gadgets himself. He would ask Sister Nell, what was the latest gadget or phone that I had? And then he would get the next version up. And then when I would meet with him, and he would ask me, so what phone do you have? Oh, Pastor Fred, I've got so-and-so. He said, oh, look at mine. And he would, he would laugh at the expression of my face. I couldn't, I couldn't believe. And this continued right on into his 70s and 80s. For those of you that knew, he had two brown eyes. And I want to tell you something, those two brown eyes never missed a thing. Not a single thing. You might have thought that he was, you know, getting on in age and not up to speed with things. But rest assured, those two brown eyes saw everything. He would come into a room and within a couple of seconds, he had done a proper and thorough reconnaissance of that area. Then he would fix his eyes on you. But only when you were not watching you didn't know that he was watching and observing you, but he was. I'll never forget some of the highlights in the embassy theater. It was a Sunday morning and he was praying for the sick. And he said to this quite a portly guy, he called him up on the platform and he said, Brother, lift your hands. The power of God is coming upon you. The brother lifted up his hands. As he did that, his trousers fell all the way to his ankles. Pastor Fred didn't miss a beat. He just carried on undeterred, laying hands on him. And the ushers ran quickly to try and pull his trousers up. But that's how he was. In 1995, I'll never forget that day when he came to Cape Town and asked whether we would come and help him in Durban. And the truth is that I was beginning to kind of like Cape Town. I was getting used to Cape Town. And actually, I didn't want to leave Cape Town. In my mind, I'd made up... My, my mind that I was staying in Cape Town. But as I drove home that day, 
I felt like the, the presence of the Lord. And I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord spoke to me and he said, I just want you to go and help see another man's vision be fulfilled. I want you to do whatever it takes to help amplify that vision, to see that vision come to pass. And when the Lord spoke those words to me, what seemed a difficult task right then seemed like quite an easy thing for me to do. I said, Lord, I think I can do that. I, it's not a hard thing. I think I can do it. And so we came January 1996. And boy, oh boy, did he keep us busy. We were running hard, pastoring, lecturing, marrying, bearing, visiting, running the music. But the truth is, he was running even harder. And I think Pastor Johnny will agree with me that it was, even in his elderly age, it was hard to keep up with Pastor Fred. But here we are in the vision of what God had given him. And we labor to see the vision come to pass. And we are here to see the vision continue to see what was imparted to us, imparted to the next generation and the next generation and the next generation until Jesus come. You see, Durban Christian Center wasn't a good idea. It wasn't even a man idea. It was and is a God idea and it's a movement and we have such a rich heritage. Pastor Fred, you've been my pastor. You've been my teacher, you've been my father, you've been my apostle, you've been my founder, you've been my example. You've been my biggest source of inspiration. You were a living, walking, talking expression of the very heart of God. You didn't tell us how to serve God. You served the Lord and then we got to watch you. You didn't tell us how to pray. You prayed. And you let us watch you. You didn't tell us how to fast. You fasted. And then we got to watch you. You didn't tell us how to use our faith. You used your faith and allowed us to watch God perform the miraculous through you. You didn't tell us how to win souls. You just went ahead and won souls and let us watch you. You weren't just an ordinary person to us, but a superbly extraordinary person. With an extraordinary faith and an extraordinary tenacity. Not to mention your extraordinary smile. And you had an extraordinary walk with an extraordinary God. And all of us got to watch you all the way. Even on that Monday night. When we watched you extraordinarily transition from this realm and into the next. It is our great loss today, but it's heaven's greatest gain. And we salute you, Pastor Fred, a true living legend and a giant of the faith. You know, it has been said that small boys become big men through the influence of big men who care about small boys. Thank you, Pastor Fred, for caring for and influencing all of us small boys. This one time I went grocery shopping with my grandparents and we had gotten all the groceries and we were at the till waiting to pay. So my grand greeted the lady behind the till and the lady smiled and she pointed to a sign next to the till that said that she was deaf. My grandpa, however, was unaware that the conversation had taken place with this lady and he started staring at her. I think he found it strange that the lady wasn't engaging in conversation with us, so he stared at her with those big brown eyes. And if anyone knows my grandpa, they'll know exactly what I mean. The lady's name was Tandeka, and he started to call her name. Tandeka, Tandeka. My grand cut him off with the usual, stop it, Fred, followed by me telling him that the lady couldn't hear. The lady carried on ringing up our groceries and grandpa continued staring. And then he said to her, you must come to church. We'll pray for you. The lady sort of smiled and nodded, and I'm not too sure if she understood what he was saying. So we left the store, and I said to him, Grandpa man, why didn't you pray for that lady? So he said to me, well, why didn't you? If there was anything about my grandpa, it was that he loved God, and wanted his family and everyone he met to love and experience God just as much as him. 
I think my gran and I probably laughed at that story for about a month. And I wish I could still be able to have more moments like that with him. But my parents have always taught me to view the glass half full rather than half empty. So I take comfort in the fact that even though physically my grandpa is no longer around, the lessons and values he's taught me will stay with me for the rest of my life. And I'll teach them to my children, for them to teach to their children, and so on. My grandpa is a legend whose legacy lives on through the lives he touched with the power of God's word. I know that if he was here now listening to what I had to say, he'd probably be very embarrassed because he never liked to be put on a pedestal. But I know that he's watching down from heaven, so hopefully he doesn't feel too awkward. Grandpa, I know I already told you this, but you're the best grandpa in the whole world. And even though I'll miss you very much while you're away on your holiday, I know that you're at peace. So goodbye for now, and I'll see you again sometime. I love you forever. I was listening to one of my grandfather's sermons the other day, so just so I could hear his voice. And I heard him say, with God there's no race. No racism either. We're all made of one blood and Jesus was for everyone. I started to think about his legacy and what an impact he made on everyone's life, regardless of race or gender. Standing here and seeing everyone gathered today is evidence of the life-changing ministry him and my grand built together. My grandfather was an extraordinary man. The man you saw up here on the stage on a Sunday was the very same man we knew and loved at home. There was no facade that he'd put on come Sunday morning. He lived, breathed, ate, drank church. I have countless memories of us sharing a meal the fa- with the family, and he would discuss ideas at what to be done at the church to win more souls. We would go on family holidays, and I can remember him saying, st- starting to talk about church, and Gran would interrupt him and say, Fred! Can you not speak about church for five minutes? We're on holiday. But I could see behind those determined eyes, he was at work thinking of bigger and greater things. If someone had to ask me what stood out about your grandfather, I would tell them his kindness, generosity, love for God, family values, humility, and his determination. You see, he had a heart of pure gold. He never raised his voice. He never, you never heard him speak ill of any man but he was a constant beacon of kindness and light. He loved to give. I would often visit his house and see him picking out suits from his cupboard and I'd ask him, Grandpa, where are you taking these? To which he replied, I'm going to bless people with them. And Pastor Nicholas, I see you refu- you got a few of those. <clears throat> Growing up on Fridays was always my special day with Grandpa. We would go to Pavilion and we would go to the arcade and he thought it was the funniest thing to start pressing all the buttons and playing around with me halfway through and would laugh at my expression on, his, on my face. We would always end the night together at Milky Lane sharing a waffle or milkshake and laughing at each other's stories. It was only as I got older I saw how his, how his determination, how strong his determination actually was when facing obstacles within his life. When he was in hospital and the doctor told him that his oxygen levels, if his oxygen levels stabilized, he, was, he could go home. That was all he needed. He had been given his task and he would do everything in his power to make sure he completed it. I'll never forget that day when I walked into his house and saw him there with a smile on his face, the smile of a victor. I often thought and was asked God, why would you let this happen to him? How could you let him get sick like this? And some time passed and I was chatting to a friend of mine who was telling me a story about a young girl who had become ill. The doctor told the father that her time was coming up and were asking permission to give her what would probably be her last shot. The doctors left the room and gave the father some time to reflect on what he had just been told. He sat there and thought about how his daughter had continuously fought and how determined to beat her ailment. How brave, fearless and positive she was regardless of the negative reports that were given. Upon the doctor's return, they asked the father what his decision was, to which he replied, I love my daughter too much to take her decision away to carry on fighting. Three words came to me after hearing this father's response, neither can I. I believe that this was God answering my continuous questions about my grandfather. You see, just like that little girl in the story, my grandfather is a tremendous fighter. He did not know the meaning of giving up. The determination and sheer will he he showed throughout his life and during the course of his ailment was unlike anything I'd seen at all. It was not until that Monday morning where he experienced and saw heaven and how real and wonderful God was that he knew he had fought the good fight. 
He had completed his mandate and that God had given him and he was going home. He always prayed for the Lord to give him a plan to be able to make it to church on Sunday. And it was not until he left the house that very last time, that very last evening, the nurse turned and said to us, You see, God gave him his plan. He'll be going to church and out these doors. And Grandpa, as you look down at all of us from heaven gathered here today to honor your life's work, I know you would be too shy and humble to accept such gratitude, but you deserve it. I cannot think of no other legend worth honoring more than you. I love you. I miss you. But I'll see you on the other side, my traveling partner. When the deep calls to the deep, before there can be a deep call, there has to be a deep to respond to it. When the famous American healing evangelist William Branham visited Durban in 1951, Pastor Fred and Nellie Roberts grabbed the opportunity to attend a series of meetings. They saw some amazing miracles and attended one meeting at the Grayville Racecourse where the crowd exceeded 100,000. Witnessing these amazing signs and wonders inspired Pastor Fred to set sail for Britain in 1952 where he was fortunate enough to study under some of the most famous Pentecostal teachers of the day. On his return to Durban, Pastor Fred wasted no time in marrying the love of his life, Nellie, and in 1954 the couple embarked into full-time service for the Lord. Right from the beginning, Pastor Fred had a driving passion to evangelize and see God's kingdom expanded. A pioneering spirit was evident from the start of their ministry when they were involved in churches in Zimbabwe, then Rhodesia, and Zambia, then still northern Rhodesia. Two years later, and back in KwaZulu-Natal, they successfully pioneered an assembly in Escort. In 1958, my wife and I took the call to come to Escort, a small rural town, to start a church. We began the work holding meetings in the town hall, but uh, the pressing need was a church building. And so I was praying and asking God for a building, a piece of land at the time. Pastor Fred and Nellie's influence in Escort is still evident today with a school, an orphanage, and a thriving church established by Pastor Dermot Sandals and his wife, Glenda. Then they moved to Durban and took up the challenge in the suburb of Malvern. We started in the suburb of, of uh, Malvern. We built a church there. And from the church in Malvern, we pioneered other churches uh, in and around the city of Durban. And of course, the church grew quite, quite extensively. We had to extend it and then God said, move on. In 1979, Pastor Fred was being stirred up by God to take a leap of faith. He moved on in faith and obedience to the Holy Spirit with confirmation from prophetic words from men and women of God, including Joy Dawson, Bill Hammond, and Roger Teal. And so Pastor Fred with Nellie launched out to start Durban Christian Center and to build a house of prayer for all nations. It was not that easy as they kept moving from venue to venue. From the Playhouse Theater, they went to the Embassy Cinema, then the Ocean City, then, the Lyric Theater was purchased and later, the Alhambra Theater was bought and became a more permanent home. However, all these venues had one thing in common. They were all too small to accommodate the thousands of people being saved, healed and delivered. Finally, vacant land was found on the top of a hill in Mayville and excavations began in 1997. One of the highlights has been the way God provides financially. You know, God says, build me a house, build me a place. He said, he told us, build a place that seats minimum 5,000. He said, then it's going to be too small. And uh, it was confirmed again and again. But then where does the money come from? How does, he, how's the, how does it happen? Because there must be money to supply the, the necessities the to vision. build that place, that vision. And uh, it's amazing how 
the Lord does supply. Thanks to several financial miracles, the Jesus Dome was completed in 1999 and dedicated to the Lord. And so the promise of a house of prayer for all nations had been fulfilled. Since then, there have been several additions to the complex, including the Bible Institute and school, with a magnificent pool opened by South African world champion swimmer Chad Leclo. Besides planting new churches around the city, numerous young men and women were being touched and called by God to step out into full-time ministry. These included the late prophet Kim Clement, who went to the U.S. to establish a ministry that touched the lives of tens of thousands of people in the U.S. and the rest of the world. Neville Norden studied at DCC and went on to pioneer a work in Pretoria, as did Theo Wolmarins, who founded his ministry at the East Rand in Johannesburg and later started a church in the U.S. Pastor Fred's son-in-law, Neville MacDonald, and his wife Wendy moved to Cape Town to establish the Good Hope Christian Center and a school which was added later on. In recent years, they took over a church in the United States. Then Richard and Debbie Gray felt called by God and left to pioneer and build a church in Peter Maritzburg. Brad Norman took the DNA of Durban Christian Center to Britain, where he pastors a thriving assembly. He is pushing the vision further into Christian Fellowship International, which was founded by Pastor Fred. Christian Fellowship International was born to further the apostolic vision and establish churches internationally. Today there are churches in the U.S., the United Kingdom, Europe, Australia, and Mauritius, all winning the lost and furthering the Kingdom of God. On the home front, DCC has helped and inspired in the building of churches in Umlazi, Komashu, and Phoenix, and starting ministries in Chatsworth, Lamontville, and two recent additions on the Bluff and in Hillcrest. DCC also has been supportive of local mission outreaches to Mozambique with the help of Ron Foster and involved with Peter Sharp, who has been preaching, teaching, and planting churches in northern KwaZulu-Natal for many years. Back in 2009, Pastor Fred's contribution to the city was acknowledged when the Durban City Fathers honored him as a living legend. When fire destroyed the Jesus Dome in June 2016, Pastor Fred sat in the car park watching the destruction. When asked what would happen now, his reply was simply, you just have to start over and build again. Pastor Fred will not be here to see the new Jesus Dome, which is scheduled to be completed in mid-2019. But his legacy and war cry of winning the lost at any cost will continue to echo in the heart of Durban Christian Center.
that was his favorite song. He always asked this quartet, wouldn't they just sing that song? Praise the Lord. Thank you all for being here today. You know, on the Monday morning, which was our anniversary, I was kissing him and loving him on his cheek, and I said, it's our anniversary, my sweetheart. He says, go to town now and go buy yourself a present. I said, I don't want to go. I don't want to leave you now, my sweetheart. You've got to go. You've got to go. You've got to go buy yourself a diamond ring. I want you to go buy yourself a diamond ring. So while we were, I was holding him and kissing him, he said, you know what? He says, they're making a big mistake in the dome. I said, what is that, my sweetheart? What mistake have they made there? He says, you know what? They were going to have a party for our anniversary. But he says, today is the day I'm going to my Jesus. Wendy, come. And she was asking her father questions like she always does. Come, Wendy. But before she comes, I just want to say this to my children. You know, when they were little, they made a lot of sacrifices. We didn't have much. They never had like other children that we could go to the toy store and just go buy our presents. As much as we made sacrifice, they did. But we never thought it was. We never made it a sacrifice. It was just life. And so they were there for us. And I just want to say thank you to my, my children that are here today. Thank you. Thank you, Wen. Thank you, Lou. Thank you, Joy Bells. And my darling daughter in, 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 uh, in America, Linda. My three children are in the ministry today, and Lynn has got her own little business in San Diego, and she, she came earlier to see her dad because I gave her the option. I said, do you want to come while dad's still here? Or we know that the doctors have given us a, a verdict. And so we knew that if Jesus didn't give him a miracle, it wouldn't happen. But I want to just thank my, my nephew here today, Dr. Charles. Thank you, Charles. He's been our doctor. Not only is he part of our family, but he's been there for Pastor Fred and I. And, and he was there the last day, and it was so comforting for me to have him there. You know, because I've never known death, you know. I, I, I don't know when somebody's dying because we didn't have it in our family. Our, our, my mother and father, they just said goodbye and they were gone. So we didn't have anybody with a long sickness. So I didn't know what was going on, you know. And, and, and Charles was trying to tell me, you know. And I was saying, okay, but, you know, okay, you know, we know that. But I never knew. I never knew. And um, so I just want to say thank you. Thank, thanks, Ingrid. Thank, thank all the pastors. Mm. You know, some of them have, have flown from overseas to be here today. And they come at their own cost, and they've come because they love us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Pastor Ron, you sitting here. Thank you that you were... When Pastor Fred needed building, when Pastor Fred needed whatever, you were there. Thank you. Thank you. And so thank you, pastors that are here today. Thank you for your support. Thank you, our wonderful congregation, that when Pastor Fred would get up and he would say, God told me to do this. He, we never took long offerings. We never begged. You know that. He would just tell the congregation and we would all support. We would all give together 
and we saw the glory of God. You know, when we started to get old and we were handing the church over and uh, Pastor Fred would say to me, you know, we want to finish well. You know, it's important to finish life well. We shouldn't look back in our life and have regrets. We should be able to look back and know that, that we've left a history behind because it's not what you achieve, it's what you leave behind. That's the most important thing. And you know, as a young man and marrying him or courting with him, one day uh, he uh, had been fasting and praying and, and I said to him, you know, you should have visited me, you know. And I said, you're always fasting and praying, man. Come on, you know. And he looked at me with those brown eyes. And he said, I want you to know from the beginning, he's first. And then he told me, he said, you know what Paul the Apostle said? He said that when you preach the gospel, you're entrusted with the gospel. Do you know what that word entrust means? It's like taking a little baby in your hands and protecting it with everything that you've got. Protect the gospel that you're preaching. Don't preach all this lot of rubbish that's going on. Preach the apostles' doctrine. That's what gets people saved. Preach the apostle. And when you ask a lot of young pastors, they don't even know what it is. We asked our pastors one day on a Friday morning meeting, what's the apostles' doctrine? They all looked at us. And they've been to Bible school. Come on. You better know because Paul says if you don't preach that, don't have anything to do with them. Amen. That's what the Bible says, not what I'm saying today. And so he said, I'm entrusted with the gospel. I'm entrusted with the gospel. And then he says, can God trust me? Can God trust me? Can he trust me with his money? I'll never forget, Pastor Fred was 60. And, you know, people had prophesied and did all kinds of, you know, encouraged us and telling us all kinds of things. And I went into my room and I said, you know, Lord, I know that you've spoken to us. We've been successful so far. And I said, you know, we don't have to fulfill people's prophecy. What are you saying? The Lord said to me three things. He said, write it down. It's my church. It's my people. And it's my money. He never worked for the Lord for a title. He never worked for a, a salary. He never worked for a title. People used to call him an apostle. Young man, man one day, we, I think we were sitting in Pastor Johnny's office, uh, in the green room at Pastor Johnny's, and a young preacher said to him, Pastor Fred, what's the greatest compliment you've ever had? He said, when my little granddaughter was seven years old, he said, I preached. And as I walked down the stairs, she looked at me and she said, Grandpa, I understood everything you said. He said, when a child can listen and understand what you're saying is the greatest compliment a preacher can ever have. Not a good sermon. Because it's the next generation, and it's the next generation. And if we don't get them when they're little, to get an older person saved is wonderful. But they've already lived their life. Let's do it now. And all he ever worried about was the, the children, the children, the children. And one Sunday morning, he woke me up and he said, you know what God told me? We've got to build a building for the children. And I said, oh, that's wonderful, you know, because that's all I have to say. That's wonderful, my sweetheart. If God says so, we'll do it. He got up on the Sunday morning, and he said, God told me, I must build a building for the children. He said, I saw the children lifting their hands and praising the Lord and getting filled with the Holy Ghost. 
And I said, and he said it to the congregation. And I think then he got hold of Brother Ron down here. Brother Ron, we've got a bull. We've got to get a bull. We've got to have, have a plan, Pastor John. Pastor, and, 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 and poor, poor old, he's always had a, okay, Pastor Fred, we'll get it, Pastor Ron. Pastor Ron said, we'll get it, we'll get it. You know, we built that building. And when we opened that building, there was no debt. Our greatest as a couple, we said, when we leave, when we're not preaching, and we've handed over the church, we don't want to leave any debt behind. We don't want our children to have to see, how can I pay? How are we going to pay this debt? How are we going to pay that? But with, with the Lord's grace, we were able to pay off everything before we handed over. And so we just thank the Lord that we can end well. Say, I'm going to end well. I don't care whether you're a businessman, whether you're just an ordinary man, a builder, but let's end our life well. When Pastor Fred, when he proposed to me, he said, Honey, I've got nothing to offer you. I don't have money. I don't have an inheritance. But he said, You know what? I've I'll give you my heart. He said, but will you eat putu three times a day with me? <laughs> so I never expected him to be able to. But we said together, we're going to do it. We're going to preach the gospel. doesn't matter what the cost. Because you see, we want to end well. We want to leave a history behind. And so, my sweetheart, my sweetheart, if I have to talk about a man, he was what he said he was. He never changed. As a father, as a grandpa, as a great-grandpa, he just loved his children. He just wanted them to have the best. And I'm so blessed to have a family. And they were there with us all the time. He could have asked for a better husband. He was kind. He was generous. He never ever in all the years ever raised his voice to me. If I wasn't right, he'd just look at me and I knew that was enough for me. And I want to thank you. Oh, man. So before he went on, where you went? I'm over here, Mum. Come. Just tell them what he, he told us. On Monday, we, Niv and I flew down on Saturday because Mum called. And on Monday morning, we went in to see him. And I said, well, you know, hi, you, Dad. And uh, he said, I dreamed, Wind, I saw you, I dreamed, and there was a terrible mistake. So mom said, Dad, Fred, what do you mean a terrible mistake? He said, I dreamed it was our anniversary, but were instead they were, having a party. they were having a party. And it was my celebration of going home to Jesus. And uh, he said, he became so clear and articulate. He said, when mortality puts on immortality, it is indescribable when. It's indescribable he said, when it's indescribable. And he and I had this thing, you know, I'd say, we'd go in and we'd say, Dad, did you go up yet? Did you go up? I said, Mom said she went up and she came back to tell us because Mom's had an experience where she went up into the presence of God. So he said, when? He said, if I go up, I don't think they'll allow me to come back. So I said, so Rebecca was in the room, and Rebecca said, Grandpa, you have enough frequent flyer faith miles, 
and you will be able to go up, come back down, and go back again. Because you've got enough frequent flyer faith miles. Because the man who was talking about the experience said you could go up by faith. So I said, Dad, did you go up? He said, I'm already there. I'm already there. He said it's indescribable. It's beyond what mortal tongue can explain. It's beyond what mortality can explain. Immortality. I said, Dad, did you fe- do you feel love? Not did you. Do you feel love? Wonderful. Oh, he said, it's real. It's real. The angels, the joy. He said, it's real, Wayne. So wonderful. He says, it's wonderful. So wonderful. And then he began, then he began to do exactly what he did when he sensed the presence of the Holy Spirit. He began to laugh. <sighs> oh, it's wonderful. Yeah, that's what it's wonderful. Beyond description. And so this afternoon, heaven is real. Because I know that he went up <laughs> and he came back because he had enough frequent yeah, flower faith. You better come back and tell us. <laughs> he said it's real. But when I asked him the first time if he went up, he said, Wind, you don't need me to go up and tell you, come back down and tell you, you've got the Bible. You've got the Bible. <laughs> and so his conviction in the word was sure. Yeah. And so today we don't sorrow as those who have no hope because we know that we'll never walk alone. Yeah. And we have a beautiful young lady who's going to sing that for us right now, Mom. And I just want to say, being in this terrible odds, and thank you. Thank you for everybody that's come. Because, you know, not last Sunday, the Sunday before, when we were praying together, he said, oh, Lord, and, and shame, he, was in bed, he had been in bed five months, he hadn't been able out, and he said to me, sweetheart, I just want to go one more time, just to be with the people. I just want to go one more time. I said, okay, my sweetheart, tell me, How do you think we can get there? He says, you know what? He says, I'll take the one scooter and you take the other scooter and we will. And now I'm thinking in my mind, we live at Hillcrest. Now imagine coming to church on the scooter, you know. And so when we prayed, he said, Lord, give us a plan. Just give me a plan so that I know how to get to church. But, you know, because he couldn't breathe, he had to have that oxygen. And so I said, sweetheart, we can go. We can go whenever you want to, but we've got to get a plan. And I just want to say I know the nurses are here. Rosie, thank you, Rosie, for singing and praising the Lord. Where are you, Rose? Where? Where are you? Down there. Oh, there's Rose. There's Beatrice. Where's Beatrice? She didn't make it. And there's uh, pretty, these ladies looked after Pastor Fred. And he loved it. He loved Rosie because and Rosie Bali. would sing the praises of the Lord to him. And, thank you, Bali. And um, so uh, thank you, and we, this, is, this is the home team that I'm talking about now. There's Sophie. Sophie has been our housekeeper all these years. And Opa is not going to be able to say good old Sophie anymore. Every time he brought her, she brought him food or whatever. Oh, good old Sophie. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. This is the home. And where's Maxwell? Maxwell has, oh, there's Mac. This is Pastor Fred's, what son. did I say? His other son. He's, he is our son, but he and Pastor Fred got up to a lot of mischief. <laughs> when Pastor Fred wanted to do something, he ducked Pastor Fred in the car, 
And I say, where's he gone? He's gone with Maxwell. So Maxwell and him used to go to the shop. He didn't want anybody else when they needed to lift him. Where's Maxwell? I want Maxwell. And so Maxwell, thank you for being there all the time for him. You know he loved you. You were his son. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you and your lovely wife and family. Anna Clarsons, who made us all the lovely banana bread. And Anna, these are our home team. You know, you can have people outside, but this is the home team that kept the house going for me and helping me and everything else. Thank you. Is there anybody else I've got to say thank you to? I want to say thank you to Pastor Johnny for his faithful all the years being there for me and Pat. Thank you. Thank you, John and Joy. Thank you, Joy Bells. All this is Joy Bells. She worked very hard. Thank you, the team, the Durban Christian team. Thank you, Phoenix. Thank you, all the choir. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you, Lou and Sylvia. Thank you for being here always. We could always depend on them. They were here. And so I know other pastors have come and they've gone, but they've stayed faithful through thick and thin. When there was no money, they were fine. When there was money, they were fine. And so we just thank the Lord that where we are today is because we had a team in our church, the people in our church rallied and helped us. We would never have done anything without doing it together. God bless you. And you know, Dad, way outlived the doctor's diagnosis. Oh, yeah. That we might not have got the absolute miracle that we were looking for, but he way outlived the diagnosis. And I want to tell you that it doesn't matter what negative words are said, we know that our faith is in a living God today. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mom.
Glory to God. As we stand in this place today, after a dream, Dr. Fred awoke. In the dream, a man had come behind him with a gun, shot him before he fell to the ground and passed away. The words that came out of his lips were make sure you're ready to go to heaven. You see, he knew and believed that Jesus lived. He died on Calvary, shed his blood for you and I. He rose again because he lives, we live also. As you're gathered in this great auditorium today and as you're watching my live stream, as you stand in this place, his greatest desire for you. Your heart isn't right with Jesus. You're not serving him. You've never said, forgive me. Wash me in your blood. Create in me a pure heart. Forgive me. There can be no greater gift or no greater adoration of this man than as you stand today in this place, knowing your heart isn't right with God. You've never said, Jesus, forgive me. Wash me in your blood. Today, you can say, dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died. You shed your blood to forgive me. You're coming again. So today, Jesus, my heart isn't right with you. I receive you. Forgive me. Right where you stand in this wonderful auditorium with your head bowed and your eyes closed and you'll say, Pastor Nev, my heart isn't right with Jesus. I need him to come into my heart and life. I need to know I am forgiven. I need to know that when I close my eyes in death, I will see him, that I'll never walk alone. Right where you are. You say, yes, Pastor Neb, I need Jesus. I need to know I'm forgiven. I'm washed in his blood. Yes. I need to know that if I was to face eternity today, I would be ready and could say, it is well with my soul. Right where you are, I want to pray for you and invite you to give your heart to our precious Lord and Savior. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for me. You said, if I would confess you and invite you into my heart, you would come. Forgive me. Wash away my sin. Cleanse me in your blood. I receive your eternal salvation. Today, you are the Lord of my life. Thank you, Jesus. As you've stood in this place or wherever you are and you've made that decision, Jesus, today you're my Lord and my Savior. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to fellowship with people in the house of God. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to live for him. You've made that decision then I'd like you just to declare to heaven or to someone next to you, Jesus Christ is my Lord. Amen. Pastor Mickey. And ask Pastor Mickey to come before we proceed to the grave. Pastor Mickey Audrey. Pastor Mickey and Audrey. Well, before I pray this morning, this afternoon, you know that my wife Audrey would love to have been here with me and with Sister Nelly, Wendy, and the whole family. 
She hasn't asked me to say anything. But I would like just to say just a few words to you, Nelly, especially. Because I know what she feels. From Audrey. Just two things. She loves you. And the second thing, whatever she can do for you, she will do with all her heart. Thank you. This is the day to honor a man that has left behind a testimony of a high standard and quality. Who could have said today the very words that the Apostle Paul said to Timothy? Follow my doctrine, my manner of life, my long suffering, my perseverance, my faith, my love, my afflictions and my persecutions. I would like to pray this afternoon and ask the Holy Spirit to encourage Sister Nelly, the family, the Church of Durban Christian Center and all of us. Because we, the children of God, we have a hope. There will be a day of resurrection when all those who have died in Christ, who have believed in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, as King, as Lord, and Savior will on that day resurrect from the dead in a glorified body so as to be with him forever that's the reason why death is not a defeat death is a victory. Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit will help us to do the work that you have called us to do so that we may also finish the race with honor as well I pray that your grace and your comfort will be on each one of us not only in the days to come but every day of our lives and I pray in the name of Jesus and I thank you Father for this wonderful time. For this is a day where Jesus is glorified and his name is lifted up. And we thank you for it, Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Pastor. We're going to ask the congregation just to remain standing this afternoon. I'm going to ask the poor bearers to come. We're going to lead the casket out and through the aisle. The family's going to follow behind, and then we'd like you to follow behind them. The casket will then remain in the foyer, and we would ask that all of you line up on either side of the pathway uh, leading up to the graveside. And then at such a time, we will bring the casket through and proceed with the burial. Thank you so much.
as we get, as we gather together in this place. I want to read from the scriptures, firstly in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is in vain, and so also is your faith. Yea, and we have found fault as witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that He has raised up Christ, whom He raised not up. For if Christ did not rise, then indeed our faith is in vain. If in this life only we have hope, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead become the first fruits of them that sleep. For since by man came also death, came also the resurrection from the dead. As in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, afterwards they that Christ that is come. Then comes the end. He shall deliver up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall put all rule and authority under his power. For he must reign, till he has put all enemies under his feet. And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. That he, that he would, would not have, have us ignorant of the coming, coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. The, Bible the Bible says, says this, that, that the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ himself shall descend, descend from, from heaven with a, with a shout, shout. With, with the ark, with the, with the sound of an archangel. The trumpet, the trumpet of God shall sound. Those, Those that are dead in Christ will, will be raised from, from the dead. When, when Paul, Paul writes, writes, he writes and he simply says, says if, if this life only, only has hope, hope then, then we are all, are all men and women most, most hopeless. But he, but he continues to say, but now Christ is risen. risen. So, so as we stand here today, today we, stand we stand with a blessed, a blessed hope, hope knowing, knowing that Christ is risen. risen. The book of Revelation, Revelation describes to us clearly that he, that he saw, saw before, before him a crystal sea. He saw thousands, thousands and thousands of angels singing it and, and magnifying God. A city, a city the, the new Jerusalem, where the saints of the Lord Jesus Christ worship our Heavenly Father. We have this ever-present hope. The Bible says that as we have this present hope, we need to purify ourselves, living each day as our last. Living, living to know that, that he indeed will return. Will return. Today, Today as we stand, stand here, we remember, we remember our, our apostolic father, Dr. Fred, Fred Roberts, who has become to, to convert him to his, to his resting place, place right here, here at, at Durban, Durban Christian Center, Center where, where he built, he wanted, wanted to rest. So, so as we, we come, come to lay to, to rest today, we do, do so mindful that he may be absent from the body, but he's present to the Lord. The Bible says we are alive, we will be caught up together, and so we shall ever be with the Lord. So today as we come to commit Pastor Fred's body to the ground, I want you to bow your heads together with me. As, as we pray. pray. Our, Our precious, precious Heavenly Father, Father, we thank you for your word, where, where you declare that you are our shepherd, that even, even if we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with us. You never, never leave us, you never, never forsake us, us. you are with us even to the ends of the earth. So, so it was with 
Dr. Dr. Fred, with our, with our apostle, our father, father. He, he lived by faith, faith. Lived, lived victorious in faith. In faith. When, when it came, came time to close his eyes, he closed his eyes in faith, faith. And, and stepped into your damage. So, so today, Father, we, we commit, commit Dr. Dr. Fred to, to the ground. ground. In an ever present hope of, of the resurrection, resurrection from the, the dead. And we thank, thank you, Lord, for your, your servant. We thank, thank you that we were able, able to minister to him. him. I want, I want you to sing the song that, that Dr. Dr. Fritz sang. Surely the, the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can see His mighty sang of the glory of your grace, of your majesty and your power. And as we lay him to rest today, we thank you that we that remain will be joined together with him. We thank you, Father, that even in this valley of shadow of death, you said you will prepare a table for us and anoint our heads with oil. And our cup of flames. So, so we commit him to the ground today, to Jesus' grave, in Jesus' name. Be sure of an ever present to the in the That's the best. In the ashes. Family of your behavior, our last respects, and you may spy. Play your last respects, there are rose, rose pickles. As, as we do so, we want to sing the songs he loved. One, one of them was Amazing Grace, of a blessed assurance. As I held his Bible today, we began to read through the places. That he had highlighted. Get, get, get on, on the front, front cover. cover. He 
he raised his name. When I opened it, his name was clearly printed in the word. It's related to rest, they related to rest in this Bible. If it's what would earthly treasures, but we rejoice together as he would want us to rejoice. He left singing, praising, worshipping, telling us about heaven. He left and came back. Dr. Charles said to him, Dad, where are you? He said, I'm in the room. But then he talked about heaven. As we held his hand, he submitted to the arms of the Lord. It was no struggle of heart. Just, just glory on his face and, and joy as, as he went, went into the, the presence, presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. For me, as, as a son of the Lord, and as a son in marriage, I've, I've seen many people go into the presence of the Lord, but never a champion. Go into the presence of the Lord with such faith and joy. Telling you and I that he sees us, he'll be with us soon, and he's come soon. Amazing grace, how sweet the sun that said, Thank you for your blessing, your peace. You bless us, 
you keep us, you give us peace, your face shines upon us. In Jesus' name.